Thank you for joining us today. To kick off our Hadoop Essentials courseware, we wanted to introduce you to Hadoop. In this module, we're going to be covering four topics. First, we're going to talk about big data. What really is big data? What does it mean? And what is Apache Hadoop? When you talk about it, what is it? How does Apache Hadoop compare to data warehouses or relational databases that we've used for years now? And then finally, what are the other open source components that make Hadoop an enterprise viable solution? So let's start with understanding big data. Well, what is big data? Is it a buzzword? Absolutely a buzzword. Probably 95% of all of the blog posts that I get in technology have big data somewhere in them. Is it a process? Is it software? Is it technology? Well, Wikipedia's definition is below. The important piece here is that it is a collection of data sets so large and complex that your current today applications and tools that you have in-house cannot adequately process that data. Now that's important to note because what could be big data to you may not be big data to a larger company or to a different company. Their ability to analyze. They, what you consider to be big data may be much larger than another company. It has to do with a data set so large and complex that it makes your tools inadequate to process that data. It also has some characteristics that are very well defined. Number one is the volume, large amounts of data, complex amounts of data, velocity, the need to process it quickly, the ability to obtain it quickly, variety, different types of data. So not only your data that have log files or text feeds, but audio, video, types of data that you had not realized or been collecting previously. And then variability, the ability to understand the semantics in terms of the context or the meaning of what you're analyzing, the data that you've got. Ultimately, all of those things lead to value. The more data you can process, the more quickly you can process it, the more variety to your data sets, the more value you get in your analysis. Big data encompasses all the types of data that there is. The most common, obviously, that we all know is structured, the stuff we've been working with for years. Data that's in a predefined schema, it's highly structured. Databases, data warehouses. Semi-structured is inconsistent in its structure. Can't be stored in rows and tables as easily in your typical database. So logs, tweets, sensor feeds, those kinds of things that have inconsistent structure. That's what we would call semi-structured. And then finally, unstructured. So either the entire data set or parts of it lack structure. Freeform text, reports, audio, video, customer feedback forms. That's unstructured, and that is our most growing segment of data today. A few years back, we talked in terms of megabytes and gigabytes. Now we're talking in terms of terabytes, petabytes, and exabytes of data. And the majority of that is coming in as unstructured. And as that grows, more and more technologies are built around the idea of dealing with those, that type of data. In-memory storage, big table, NoSQL, MapReduce, HBase, Yarn. All of these words tie to the concepts around Hadoop, processing big data. So what is Apache Hadoop? Well, first off, Apache comes from the Apache Software Foundation. Apache Hadoop is free to license, free to use, download from the Apache Software Foundation. What Apache Hadoop allows you to do is take all of those different types of data, all types of data, analyze, store them, and analyze them, and make better decisions. You're no longer kept to whatever technology you have in-house today to handle structured data. This analytics platform, or Apache Hadoop will allow you to build analysis on far greater numbers of, of data. So the Hadoop characteristics, Apache Hadoop is open source, so it is free. It allows for many, many things. Most notably, 
It has built-in replication and reliability. It also allows for data and analysis and the analysis to be co-located. What that means to the end user or what that means to the enterprise is as I scale out my storage, I'm able to utilize those processors on those servers for analysis. Instead of having to gather all the data that my analysis needs and bring the data and make a copy of the data and bring it to the analysis, instead now with Apache Hadoop, I chunk up the analysis and send it to the closest data possible. It's scalable and it has reliable error handling. So Apache Hadoop has been around for a while, almost 10 years now. In 2005, Yahoo was using, very dependent on Apache Hadoop. And they created a team under Eric Bulgesfeiler, uh, E14 as he's known, to work on Hadoop and to build innovation into Apache Hadoop. Then in 2008, as their clusters grew, it became imperative to operationalize the management of those clusters. So the team turned around and started focusing on the operational tasks surrounding Hadoop. Then in 2011, 24 of those original developers formed Hortonworks to make an enterprise viable Apache Hadoop solution and they started working on stability. So this team has focused on innovation, operations, and stability to provide enterprise viable Hadoop. So in the enterprise, what does this mean to a company, Hadoop in the enterprise? Well, first off, from an archival and storage perspective, you can retain years of data. You do not need to know how you're going to use your data. You don't only have to select portions of your data. You simply store it all. You can retain the intermediate formats, reports, different ways that you've calculated on that data. Then you can transform data. You can map inputs and outputs where needed. You can turn unstructured data into structured at runtime. You do not have to know and preconceive how you're going to use that data until the time you're going to use it. In terms of your analysis, you can explore data in place without the need to transform it first. Again, MapReduce, a part of Hadoop, takes the compute, takes the analysis to the data. There's no need to transform it and extract it. You can execute arbitrary code against the data for analysis. You don't, again, you don't have to preconceive it. You can simply run it ad hoc. So when we talk about Hadoop, one of the questions that we get a lot, well, is it a, a database? No. It's a distributed file system. So how does it compare? So in terms of a relational database to Hadoop, one of the fundamental things, fundamental differences is within regards to schema. A relational database requires a schema on the right. Hadoop requires it on the read, which means I can store and I can write all my data into Hadoop and do not have to worry about how I'm going to use it until I use it, until I read it. Which means though, reads are faster in a relational database where writes are faster in Hadoop. Relational has standards and structure around governance. Hadoop is still loosely structured. In terms of a strict relational database, there's limited to no data processing within a relational database. With Hadoop, you process and you store at the same time. In terms of your data types, relational database obviously uses structured. Hadoop will use multi, structured, or unstructured. Relational databases scale up. Hadoop scales out. And then your best fit use cases, interactive OLAP anal analytics, complex ACID transactions, and then an operational data store for a relational database where Hadoop is much built, better built for data discovery processing unstructured data, massive storage and processing capabilities. These are different tools for different jobs. Hadoop will not replace databases. Different jobs. But there's a bunch of different pieces that make Enterprise Hadoop Enterprise viable. And those are some other open source components. So Hadoop itself is a distributed storage and processing technology for large-scale applications. HDFS, 
Hadoop Distributed File System. It's a self-healing distributed file system for multi-structured data. It breaks those files into blocks and stores, and then it redundantly sends them across the cluster. MapReduce itself is a framework for running large data processing jobs in parallel across many nodes and combining those results, mapping them, reducing them, sorting them. We'll cover HDFS and MapReduce more in depth in a later module. YARN, which is coming in Hadoop 2.0, is a new application management framework that enables Hadoop to go beyond MapReduce applications. In terms of data services, to enable the enterprise to utilize this for data services, such that store, process, and access data in various ways, we utilize Scoop, Flume, Pig, Hive, HCatalog, and HBase. Web HDFS is a web service interface for, uh, for HDFS. It's a scalable REST API that enables easy and scalable access to HDFS via a REST, APS, REST API. Flume, it stores log files and events. It's a distributed service for efficiently collecting, aggregating, and moving streams of log data into HDFS. The streaming capability with failover and recovery mechanisms make it viable for those companies looking for more stream-like solutions. The primary use case for Flume is to move web log files directly into Hadoop. Scoop. Scooping data from SQL to Hadoop. Scoop. Get data to and from SQL databases. So it allows you to move structured data in and out of Hadoop. The tools and connectors that enable the data from traditional SQL databases and data warehouses to be stored to and retrieved from Hadoop. There are connectors built to enable this. PIG. PIG enables data workers to write complex data transformations using scripting language. That language, of course, would be PIG Latin. PIG Latin defines a set of transformations on a data set, such as aggregate, join, and sort, that can be extended by using user-defined functions. PIG is more appealing to developers that are familiar with scripting languages in SQL than writing Java. Hive is a SQL interface for Hadoop. It connects to Excel, MicroStrategy, PowerPivot, Tableau, and other tools using the Hive ODBC drivers. HiveQL or HQL is a language that allows data, data analysts and DBAs to use a SQL-like language so that they don't have to learn another language. HBase is the NoSQL database for interactive applications. It's commonly used for serving intelligent applications that predict user behavior, detect shifting usage patterns, or recommend ways for users to engage. It's a non-relational columnar database, HBase. HCatalog manages the metadata and table for Hadoop. It's a metadata service that enables users to access Hadoop data as a set of tables without needing to be concerned where or how the data is stored. If you are utilizing Hive or HBase or strict HDFS, each one of those would require a different entry point. HCatalog allows you to not have to worry about that. It enables consistent data sharing and interoperability across data processing tools. And it enables deep operability and data access with such systems as Teradata, SQL Server, because those outside applications connect into Hadoop via H catalog. So in terms of Hortonworks, we focus very strongly into Apache H catalog, Apache Hive, and Web HDFS. In terms of operational services, things that make Hadoop viable for a data center, first and foremost is Apache Umbari. It makes Hadoop clusters easy to operate, simplifies the installation of clusters by, with a step-by-step -step install wizard. Some of the pre-configured operational metrics that will allow for insight into the health of the Hadoop services, those that we know 
to be very vital to the health of the Hadoop services. It has an intuitive user interface and it just makes it easier to manage rather than everything being command line. Uzi allows for workflow and scheduling. It's a workflow system that coordinates jobs written in multiple languages such as MapReduce, Pig, and Hive. You can set an order and dependencies with Uzi. For us, for Hortonworks, we have focused extensively in Umbari. We've been leading with Umbari for some time. Platform services, primarily the enterprise readiness tools, that allow for enterprises to be able to deploy Hadoop easily. It can be deployed on the OS and bare metal, in the cloud, on a virtual machine, and in an appliance. And here you can see the very different pieces of the Hortonworks distribution of Hadoop. In terms of data architectures, we reside, or Hadoop resides, between the big data sources and those things handling BI, analytics, and whatnot. And then off to the side, it's managed through your operations tools already in place or custom ones built to manage. So in summary, as we stated early on, big data includes many types and sources of data. It's growing exponentially, and it's making it difficult to process and manage using the traditional systems we have in place. Apache Hadoop is an open source, scalable data processing platform that reliably runs on commodity hardware. No need for RAID, no need for very expensive storage. You can use commodity hardware and benefit from the processors on that hardware. Apache and data warehouses or databases differ on a number of dimensions, so coexisting will solve greater numbers of problems for you. And then the Apache Hadoop components that work together to provide data and operational and platform services to the enterprise are those items that make it H Apache Hadoop enterprise viable. Thank you for joining us today on this topic. In our second module, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into core Hadoop.